Today's headlines. A £15,000 prize and an engraved pen to write a new book with. Find out who won the Etisalat Prize for Literature for Debut Fiction. Ghana joins the energy train and airfare is about to get really cheap in Kenya. A few good story will make Ghanaian farmers happy and today's hero is both media savvy and business smart. Lots to enjoy today on EL Reports. Hello everybody and welcome to EL Reports. Let me start today with a question. What is the smallest capital in Africa? Should I give you a clue? Nah, I won't. What I will give you is the news of the day starting now. No Violet Bulawayo, the Zimbabwean author of the book We Need New Names, has won the inaugural Etisalat Prize for Literature for Debut Fiction. The ceremony held in Lagos, Nigeria, and is for writers of African citizenship whose first fiction book was published in the last 24 months. No Violet Bulawayo's book, BTO and the Omoto Show's Bomboy, and Karen Jennings Finding Subek to win the grand prize of £15,000. She was also presented with an engraved Mont Blanc pen and a Samsung Galaxy Note. She will attend the Etisalat Fellowship at the University of East Anglia and will be mentored by Giles Foden, author of The Last King of Scotland. Ms. Bulawayo will also have book tours in three African cities and get the chance to start work on her second book. No Violet Bulawayo was shortlisted for both the Man Booker Prize and the Guardian First Book Award but missed out on both, making this an especially sweet victory for her. She's quoted as saying, I am thankful to the organizers of this event, Etisalat Nigeria, for this most excellent and necessary prize. We are all aware of the shortage of literary prizes and it is heartwarming to know that Etisalat Nigeria sees and values the significance of such literary works in Africa. The acting chief executive officer of Etisalat Nigeria, Matthew Wilshire, shared that the Etisalat Prize for Literature Award was designed to recognize and reward debut writers of fiction in the African region, with the objective of discovering new creative talent from Africa and promoting the growing publishing industry on the continent. The energy train moves to West Africa with this report from Modern Ghana that Ghana's energy production is set to increase following an agreement between independent power provider Sunon Asogli Power Plant and its mother company, the Shezhen Energy Group, to produce 1,560 megawatts of power. We're told that under the agreement, a new plant is expected to be established by the Sunon Asogli Power Plant to produce 700 megawatts of power using coal. The existing facilities of the Asogli plant will produce an additional 360 megawatts of power. The Shezhen Energy Group will also establish a new plant in the western region to produce 500 megawatts of power. Minister of Energy and Petroleum Mr. Emmanuel Amakofi has stated that Ghana, from all indications, is on the verge of becoming a net exporter of power in West Africa. Modern Ghana tells us that the current gas deposit of the country, out of various exploratory activities, indicates that Ghana has over 9 trillion standard cubic feet of gas, which could guarantee the country several decades of constant power supply. Travelers in Kenya are no doubt excited about news that Kenya Airways is preparing to start flights on its low-cost carrier Jumbo Jet. The flights, which will start in April, will cost 3,500 Kenyan shillings, about 35 US dollars. Flights will cover the Kisumu, Eldoret and Mombasa routes from Nairobi and then will add regional flights to Bujumbura, Kigali, Juba, Goma, Mwanza, Zanzibar, Kilimanjaro and Addis Ababa later. Jumbojet is Kenya Airways' answer to increased competition in the region's low-cost air travel market and chief executive of the airline, Mr. Willem Hundius, estimates that between 30 and 40 percent of Jumbojet's customers will be travelers who are currently relying on roads to move within the region. <laughs> 